Welcome to the series where I test out the OSR's wiki money making guides. I started this series almost a year ago and since then we've tried out multiple methods even if they're a little silly such as picking bananas or even flax. If you enjoy these types of videos then feel free to check out the playlist that I've made for them and feel free to leave a suggestion down in the comments for a method that you'd like to see tested. With that being said, let's get into the video. So for today's video we'll be taking a look at spiritual mages. Now, the reason why we're going for these is because they drop the dragon boots. They also drop a lot of other runes, but the dragon boots is really what we are after. Now, as for requirements, you will need 83 Slayer to kill these spiritual mages, along with some nice combat stats, um, either melee or range, whatever you want to use here. 70 agility is also recommended for access to a better place to kill them. And of course, prayer is a must since they do use magic attacks that hit fairly accurately. You'll also need partial completion of Troll Stronghold and having Edgar's Roost completed with 61 magic will also be helpful since you unlock the Trollheim teleport which will get you fairly close to the area where these spiritual mages are located. Now the profit rate assumes that we get 180 kills per hour so we'll see how many we get for this one hour. Now before starting this I was debating whether I should bring uh, best in slot strength so I was thinking about bringing full bandos but the guide said to bring Proselyte, so I'm going to bring that just to, I guess, follow the guide more closely. So as for the gear setup, I am bringing Proselyte armor with Primordial Boots, Ferocious Gloves, Berserker Ring Eye, the Abyssal Whip, and the Unholy Book that is going to be our Zamorak God item. I also have the Rada's Blessing 4 along with the Amulet of Torture and the Ceridomen Imbued Cape, which is our Ceridomen item. So make sure you have an item for Ceridomen and for Zamorak since there are both of those minions in the area that we are going to be killing these spiritual mages. I also have the Nate's Not Face Guard, and I also decided to bring my SGS since I haven't really used it in a while, but it isn't necessary. Obviously, if you don't have this, then you can just bring a Dragon Dagger. That will be a good spec weapon, and it is also pretty cheap. For this one hour, I decided to bring nine prayer potions, and I think it should last me. Even if it doesn't, I'll probably just uh, start flicking the prayers, but this should be good enough for the one hour. As for getting there, I did use a Trollheim teleport to get to the top of, I guess, Trollheim, you could say. Then I just ran north past the trolls who like to throw rocks, so make sure you have protect range on. Then we walk past the wolves with protect melee, and then when I entered the dungeon, I put on protect from mage. Now this area that you just saw right there, that's a good place to kill them. If you have 70 agility though, and you bring an extra rope, you can access this area, and this is where I will be killing the spiritual mages for one hour. And the reason for this is because there are three mage spots that are here and there is a werewolf that will distract these spiritual mages from time to time. Now as I'm sure you've already noticed, the spiritual mages are highlighted in blue and this is just the NPC indicator plugin. I added their name to that plugin and now it just highlights the spawns as well as the actual NPC just to identify them easier. I also noticed that when I first entered the dungeon, as I was setting up the video, I was there for about 5 minutes and there was a mage that was slapping a werewolf on the side for like 5 straight minutes and he didn't kill it. It was like on 1 HP the entire time and he simply could not kill him, I don't know why. Um, for whatever reason, whenever I attack the spiritual mages and they're not already in combat, they do use their magic spell on me but whenever they start attacking a werewolf, it looks like they start slapping it with melee. So uh, yeah, I'm not sure what that is. Maybe they're more resistant to magic or maybe they just want to disrespect these Zamorak minions more, but uh, I thought that was pretty interesting. And as a follower of Zamorak, I couldn't just let my Zamorak boys get slapped around, so I did help them clean out this area of Ceridoan minions, so we did do our part today. Now as you can see by my inventory, we already have loads of runes. We also have a hard clue that we got fairly early on, and that is a 1 in 128 drop. This wasn't the drop we were looking for. The drop we're looking for is of course the Dragon Boots, which is also a 1 in 128 drop. Now before anyone says anything in the comments, no I will not be doing this hard clue for the total loot at the end. I'm saving all the clues that I get for Master Clues, since I'm very close to completing 100 Master Clues. So once I get close to that and I have all the caskets ready, I will make a video on that as well. But yeah, going back to the drops, they drop a whole lot of runes. And we also get some anti-poisons and some pure essence along the way. We also have a sapphire at this point, that is from the rare drop table. And on this rare drop table, they do have a chance of dropping nothing as well. So 
the total kill count at the end in the loot tracker will be different from the NPC kill count that you see here on the top right. But I did factor that in and will give you an accurate representation of how many spiritual mages we killed. Now, if there's something that I would change, I would probably bring a Zamorak cape instead. Because whenever I switched to my SGS, I obviously put the Unholy Book away. And that meant that the Zamorak minions would aggro onto me, which was pretty annoying because a lot of the time I would see the feral vampires moving around and they wouldn't be attacking the Ceredoman warriors. But as soon as I put that SGS on, they would walk from across the dungeon to attack me, which was pretty silly, but I guess that's just the way it is. Kind of crazy that I have to wield a book to show that I'm loyal to Zamorak, but it's whatever. Now, if you do bring a... Zamorak cape instead of the Ceredoman, then you can easily just use a prayer scroll that is for Ceredoman. That way you can still pretty much be unaggroed by both the sides. For this video, I was using my Rod's Blessing 4 just because it has more prayer bonus, I think, and because I already had different items for the different gods, except for that SGS switch. But if you don't bring it and you bring the Dragon Dagger, then you'll be totally fine since using the Dragon Dagger won't put away the Unholy Book. Now by this point, we did pass the 128 kill mark and no dragon boots, so again, never lucky, but that's just the way it goes sometimes. Another item that you could bring if you want is some super combat potions. The wiki didn't mention it, so I decided not to bring those, just to stay as close as possible to the uh, directions and inputs and outputs on that. But if you want to, you can definitely bring those. It'll help with hitting some of these spiritual mages because some of them are very tanky. Some of them I was hitting constant zeros and it was a little frustrating, but... Uh, it didn't happen too often, so that's good. Now, it had been a very long time since I'd killed these. Uh, the last time I killed them was whenever I had a Slayer task for them, and I'm pretty sure I've only done one Slayer task for them. I was very excited to have access to getting the Dragon Boots, but I didn't really like the tasks too much, so I think I put them on the block list right after my first task. So yeah, it had been a while. Now, unfortunately, the Dragon Boots aren't as expensive as they used to be. I remember they used to be over 400k, and currently they're like around 230k, I think. But we did luck out towards the end, and we got our pair of Dragon Boots, so that was very nice to see. So it might be worth keeping an eye out for the price of Dragon Boots. That way, whenever they go up again, you can maybe farm these Spiritual Mages for a while and get a couple pairs and make some nice profit. So here we are one hour later with all of our loot. I did pick up all the drops, so that's all the runes, and of course the dragon boots for a total of almost 600,000 GP for this one hour, which is pretty good. I'd say it's a decent mid-level moneymaker. I mean, the only really high requirement is the slayer level. You do need 83 for that, but once you get it, it's not a bad slayer task. Uh, not one of my personal favorites, but I mean, it could be fun for some. Now as for selling off the loot, I pretty much put all the items in there for close to their market price since these are runes and they don't fluctuate too much, but I was surprised to see that a lot of these runes are actually very low in price. So that was a little disappointing, but we still got close to our price check that we did a couple minutes ago, so that was nice. Now as for how much total profit we made from this one hour, if we take the cost of supplies, which was just the prayer potions that we used, it is 64,477 GP. Subtract that from the money we made, which was 592,479 GP, we get a grand total profit of 528,002 GP. So again, not a bad moneymaker for med levels. I think the thing that I hated the most about this the first time that I did it was just the fact that it's a far run, so every time you bank it's... Kind of a far run, but I mean, it's not that bad when you're actually there. We did last uh, an entire hour with our full proselyte, and we used less than 9 prayer potions, so that's good. That was of course with the help from the SGS spec that we have. Here's also a look at the total XP that we got. We got some nice combat XP along with hit points XP, and a little bit of agility XP from using that shortcut. Or, actually it's not even a shortcut, but just entering that area. And here's a look at all of the kills that we got from the Spiritual Mages. It says we did 201, but with the NPC kill count, it was more like 207, because we did kill one Knight of Ceredoman by accident. But yes, this is the loot from over 200 kills of Spiritual Mages. I just want to say thanks for checking out the video, and if you enjoyed it, please consider giving it a thumbs up, and maybe even a subscription. And as always, I will catch you guys in the next episode. Thank you.